Alright, today we are working on a 2016 Hyundai Sonata. This is the base model. This has manual emergency brakes. It's not the power one, so if, the, if you are looking for the power um, adjustment, um, this video is not going to be... Uh, it's not going to assist you, but I do have something similar in that. I think it's the Mazda. Um, it will be a little bit similar in design of the way how you're going to do that. But if you already haven't, like, subscribe, share, and then comment down below if you have any questions on this job. And then um, basically the tools you're going to need, you're going to need a 21 millimeter. You're going to need a Phillips 2 screwdriver to take off the drum. And then you're going to need a 14 millimeter to take off the caliper bracket and the caliper itself. And a hammer just in case. And then a flathead screwdriver just in case we need to make adjustments on the emergency parking shoe as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Then I'll go ahead and um, start the video right after the intro. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and jack up the car. Now right here in the rear of the car, um, right next to the muffler, we're gonna go ahead and jack it up from the subframe itself. So right there, you wanna jack it up right there. Now if you didn't have a, a jack, uh, jack like that, you can actually jack it up from right here. Um, but we're gonna be doing both wheels at the same time. But I would put my jack stand right there to reinforce the area so the car doesn't fall on you. So 21 millimeter for the lug nuts. And then 14 millimeter for the caliper bracket. Uh, well, the caliper itself and then the brackets behind it. So it's going to be this part right here. So there's going to be two bolts behind there. And those are going to be 14 millimeters. So both of these, so there's going to be four bolts that are 14 millimeters. And then we're going to take off these two screws right here. And then you're going to be using the Phillips 2 screwdriver for that. So, um, if you're having a, a trouble taking off these screws, what you can do is um, you can get your, your screwdriver and then tap on this back piece with the hammer. Um, if you're using a screwdriver, obviously you're going to be tapping it and then as you're tapping it, um, kind of like loose, um, put, like put firm on it, like hold it firmly and then try loosening it at the same time. It might loosen out at that moment, but if not, at least you're getting whatever debris inside broken up. And um, you can tap on the on the drum if you're going to replace it on these spots right here. You can tap right there and on the opposite side with the with the um, with the hammer as well. That'll help break free, but these were actually pretty easy to come off. Then we're going to go ahead and um, take off this rubber piece that's right there. So we'll just push on the inside. And then we're going to switch this over to our new rotor. So we'll just push this right in. Just like that. Then when we're going to go ahead and put on a new rotor, we need to make sure that these screw holes line up with the ones on the, on the wheel hub. So since this goes in too loo loosely, um, our shoes, they have enough meat, so um, that's pretty much good to go, as you can see right there. So this is why, hence, you'll need the flathead screwdriver. Okay. 
And then basically you're going to turn this one, just kind of flip it around. And so now it's starting to build tension. So now I'm going to start um, playing in and out of it. So that's still loose. So we're going to go ahead and keep going. So we're going to go probably maybe half a turn or 180. So when the clock spring goes half, uh, like a 180 degrees, then we'll go ahead and put the, the drum back in. So that feels pretty good right there. It's, it's snug. So we're going to go like another 90 degrees. So a couple. Just like that. So that's perfect. So you see how... Slightly adjust it a little bit more. So you want to make sure that this spins still. So that's in there pretty snug. So you want that. That's actually pretty perfect right there. Um, I'm probably going to back off maybe just a tooth. And then we'll call that a day. So then for our, we're going to go ahead and replace our new hardware kit, but we need to make sure our guide pins are pretty good. So if they're not moving freely, you're going to go ahead and lubricate these. So you would put grease around here. This already has plenty of grease, so we're not going to go ahead and lubricate that. And then for these, So for these, we're going to go ahead and just pop these guys right out. Then we'll go ahead and install our new ones. It's really nothing fancy to it. Just make sure that it's seated in properly. So you want this little, those, those pins right there to be as flat as possible with that. And then we're going to go ahead and re-grease our, our pads. So we're just going to grease it just like this. Make sure you get this, these edges right here. Just like that, you want those both greased. And then right here is going to have a wear indicator. You're always going to want to make sure that indicator is on the bottom because obviously the wheel is going to be going in a counterclockwise. So we'll just slap on these guys. So what I do is I just kind of tilt them in just like this and just push them in. So then we're going to go ahead and tighten down our um, caliper. Now you can use some pliers for this or you can get the brake caliper tool. Um, part number for the brake tool is going to be 27111. You can rent that from AutoZone. So basically you just grab this firmly just like that. And make sure that it's sitting flat right here for this bottom lip and you just squeeze it. So it should go in pretty smoothly. You should have no... No resistance. If you do, then you have a bad piston on there. 
Then we're going to go ahead and put in our first bolt. And we'll just hold it up with our wrist. And then while putting these pins right here, we're going to put our thumb right there just to hold that in place so it doesn't shoot out. And then same thing. Then we're going to go ahead and move our finger down right here just to hold it more in place. And then we'll guide this other pin right there. So make sure that these go in their holes. So just like that. And so while you're still holding this down, then you're going to go ahead and bring down the caliper. And then you just let go. And then pretty much the rest is going to be a fast forward. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention too. Now if these, the guide pins that are in the caliper, if they're spinning, um, you can use your, your pliers to hold those down. To lock these in place just like that while you loosen that bolt. Now we're going to go ahead and bolt down the, the rim. So you're going to start off one bolt pretty slowly. You want the rim to sit in fully and then I haven't tightened this bolt all the way down. So I'm going to tighten the top one first and then um, on the opposite side doesn't matter where as long as it's on the opposite side so you know it's fully seated in and you want to bolt it down in a star pattern like so one two three four five and that's pretty much it um, also one thing I forgot to mention basically if the if the drum is not coming off don't forget to release your emergency uh, parking shoes or parking brakes all right so after you're done doing the whole process and bringing down the car what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and then you're going to go ahead and pump up the brakes until they are firm again and then you're going to go ahead and drive it around give it up to 500 miles of break-in time that would be like the recommended spec so that the rotors don't warp and then the pads aren't uneven um, if this video helped you out comment down below like and then share the video and then subscribe for more upcoming videos in the future and thanks for watching.